Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to episode 3 of my GCSE revision series. If you're new here, hi, my name's Radhika and I'm doing a GCSE revision series on my channel because students in the UK are returning to school after 5 months of doing nothing and I want to help as many of you guys as I possibly can and the best way that I can do that is through an online platform like YouTube. This GCSE series is my way of helping you guys so I'd really appreciate if you could help me out by subscribing to my channel because it really really does help me plan my content accordingly and comment down below what video do you want to see next? Do you want to see science or do you want to see maths or do you want to see English? Today's video is super exciting because today's video is a collaboration with Hiba from Study Vision. Hiba also does revision content like mine but both of us do it in our unique styles. Hiba likes to go for voiceovers and when she's studying she will explain what she's talking about. Her animations help you actually focus on the video and I love her live stream idea where she does a lot of study with me, live streams, Pomodoro technique to help you guys sit down, be productive and get any revision or study or homework that you need to get done. When I came across Hiba's channel a few days ago, I fell in love with her voice. It's like listening to a podcast. It's just so soothing and relaxing and her accent is amazing. Hiba also does a positivity message at the end of her videos, which I think is a really sweet touch because everyone needs a bit of positivity, especially in these times. I'm going to link Hiba's channel down in the description box and in the comments. She also has a study ground page, which is so close to 1000 followers. So please go help her out there and show her some love. Hiba, thank you so much for collaborating with me on this video and I cannot wait to collaborate with you in the future. So today's video is going to be how I got a 9 or an A star in GCSE Biology. Biology was a really highly requested one and I get it, it is super hard, but hopefully you can take something away from this video and get that 9 or A star in Biology. My first tip, and if you've watched my first video, you know how much I love BBC Bite Size. BBC Bite Size for Biology is amazing, specifically their diagrams. Their diagrams really, really did help me learn because I am a visual learner and biology is all based on diagrams. Diagrams are easy marks. If you know how to label a diagram, that could literally be worth four or five marks in the actual exam and that's an easy four or five marks that you can get. One thing I love about BBC Bite Size is how they break down each of the sections into exam boards. So for me, if you are from Northern Ireland, I'm trying to get this out to as many Northern Ireland viewers as I possibly can because there aren't many resources out there for SIA. So if you are a SIA student, I would recommend checking this out because every other resource is directed towards AQA or Edexcel or the Welsh board. Nothing is related to us in Northern Ireland. Trust me, BBC Bite Size is amazing. They also have a section which is dedicated to practicals, which I thought was really good because again, there's not much revision to practicals. I think SIA is the only exam board which is practical revision. So there aren't many resources out there. BBC Bite Size, please sponsor me. I will happily be your brand ambassador because you're amazing. Now I'm pretty sure every exam board has one of these but these are so useful and these are the revision guides for students. This is like pretty much a summary of what you need to know and it's laid out really well in bullet points. There are sections where you test yourself and there are also tips and tricks on how to get maximum marks and be efficient in the exam paper. This is $9.99 so it's a lot cheaper than the textbook which is usually between 20 and 25 pounds. This has two years worth of content packed into this small slim A4 book so I would definitely recommend going out and buying it especially if you are a year 11 or year 10 student if you're in England watching this this will literally save you when it comes to exams there are also sections where you can add what dates your exams are which is really useful because you know okay I have to learn this by this if I want to get a 9 or an A star if you want to get a discount on these books you should buy them from Hotter Education not Amazon Amazon doesn't offer any discount I know this because I spend a lot of money on them so go on to hottereducation.com go into your exam board section and buy the books from there because it will be cheaper it's a little bit of money but when you're buying a lot of them it does add up. Practicals are the bane of every science teacher's life. No student really pays attention in practicals. Now that I've actually come to A level I feel really really sorry for GCSE practical teachers because literally no one listens during them but my tip here is to listen and actually focus on the practicals. So this tip primarily applies to my Northern Irish peers because with SIA there is a practical exam. I'm sorry I don't know about AQA or Edexcel. I'm not really sure how that works. If you know how to do a method properly then you can sort of reiterate that in the exam and that will help you get a good mark in the paper. They come up in the forms of two mark questions, three mark questions, even a six marker on how you do something and think about it if you don't know how to do that then you're not going to get those marks and that can make a huge difference on what grade you achieve. My next tip is super simple and I haven't really seen many people talk about this and that is to keep referring to your specification. Your specification is a goldmine for information. Think about it, it contains every single thing 
you need to know or every single thing that could come up in your exam that is expected of you. I'm not telling you to go out there and learn your specification off by heart, but I'm telling you to keep referring to it. Whenever you're revising, have it out in front of you. If you can't print it out, put it on your laptop or your phone and use it. The exam questions are going to be based on things that are on the specification. And if you don't know what's on the specification, then how are you going to know what to revise for the exam? This is super important for biology because a lot of specifications have definitions which you need to learn. And if you learn them directly from the specification instead of from other textbooks or from your notes, then that's exactly what you need to write in the exam to get marks. Go onto the exam board website, go onto the subject biology and print out the specification for yourself. A lot of the textbooks that are produced by the exam board also do contain the specification at the start of the textbooks. So that could also be an option. But what I'm trying to say is please refer to the specification and highlight the definitions on it. Highlight the points in bold. Highlight the practicals you need to know because like I said earlier, it is a goldmine for information which could bring you closer and closer to the nine or eight star mark. I'm pretty sure most people watching this have been in this situation before. They've written a really good answer in biology, but they've still gotten only one of the three marks available. And they're thinking, why? Why did I not get three out of three? Well, that's probably because you didn't include the keywords. Keywords, 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 keywords. I love keywords. Biology teachers love keywords. Everyone loves keywords because that is what GCSE biology is based on. Keywords. What do I mean by keywords? I mean the words that are in bold in your textbook. The words that your teachers have been constantly, constantly trying to drill into your brain. These are the important words. If you go on to any past paper mark scheme for biology, you'll see all the forward slashes and you'll also most likely see words that are in bold and they're the words you need to have. If you don't have those words, you don't get the mark. It's as simple as that. With biology, it all comes down to learning and memorizing. Memorizing is key for getting a nine or an A star in biology because if you don't know the content off by heart and you sort of half know it, then I'm sorry, you're just not going to get good marks. You need to know it so well and you need to know those key words. Write them in bold, write them in red, highlight like there's no tomorrow. Make sure you know the key words and make sure you include them in your exams. If you find it difficult to learn key keywords, why not write them down on post-it notes and put them around your house or your room? Make sure you know your keywords off by heart. That was really cringy. I don't know why I did that, but let's just move on. My next tip is super self-explanatory and I'm not gonna go into it in too much detail, but that is to keep referring and using past paper questions. If you look at any past paper for biology, a lot of the questions do have a similar setup. They're usually quite consistent and worth similar or same marks. And if you come across a question that came up in 2013 and was worth six marks, in 2021, it could be worth three, but it could more or less be the same question. Basically, what I'm trying to say is do past papers throughout the year, don't just do them in the last month before the exam and then stress that oh shit I'm getting one out of six in an exam question. Think about it if you start doing past papers in January as opposed to doing it in May like a lot of people do then when it comes to May you will be in a much higher position than someone that has just started doing past papers and is only getting one out of six. I want you to keep May as your target. By May you should be getting at least 90% or above in past papers if you want to get a good mark because past papers pretty much tell you where you stand in your exam. There are so many any resources on the internet claiming to hold past papers for AQA or Edexcel or SIA and do not click those. I have done this myself before. I once clicked on this link by some secondary school in like Bangor and I was trying to find a past paper mark scheme. I clicked on it and my computer started being like, you've got a virus your credit card details have been stored and I started to freak out. Ever since then, I only use the ones that are available on my exam board's website. Do not click on any websites that are claiming to be schools because most likely they're not. Just stick to the past papers that are available on your exam board's website because they've gone through clearing and if they need to be modified, they're always modified and updated as opposed to some website which is claiming to be a school website but will literally just corrupt all of your computers and laptops. My last tip, I cannot stress to you how important it is and that is to not cram biology. You cannot cram biology. Don't think you can. How can you learn one year's worth of work in two or three hours of revision the night before the exam? You can't. It's just simple, you can't. And it can either go two ways. You could either do exceptionally well or most likely you will fail. The key to doing well at GCSE for biology is to be consistent. Every single year, there will be that one silly person that thinks, oh yeah, I'm just gonna cram the night before. <laughs> fine and then comes out with an f don't be the f and here on this channel if you clicked on this video you don't want an f you want an a star or a nine so the best thing that you can do is to work consistently i think i don't know if the science behind it is true 
homework is really good for revision because it's solidifying your knowledge and you are subconsciously learning. So complete your homework on time to avoid cramming and also revise consistently throughout the year so that when it comes to May and June time, you're not stressing over, oh my God, I have two years worth of work to learn in two hours on the exams tomorrow. Just don't be that person. Just revise throughout the year. I cannot stress this enough. I'm probably boring you to death by constantly repeating it. But seriously, the most important tip, do not cram biology. So guys, that is the end of my how to get a nine or an A star in GCSE biology. I hope it was informative and I hope it was useful. Finally, a massive thank you to Hiba from Study Vision for collaborating with me on this video. Guys, go check out her channel. Go check out her study gram if you need extra revision support or you just need some motivation. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss another video. Also, this video is available in my back to school GCSE playlist. Timestamps will be down in the description box below as well. So if you need to skip anything, you need to rewatch, you can do so easily. I'm also going to be linking down below any additional resources I think will be useful for you and will help you get that 9 or 8 star in biology. Biology can be summarized in two words and they are hard work. If you work hard in biology, if you work consistently and you're constantly revising and keeping on top of things, there's no reason why you shouldn't get a 9 or an A star in biology. Finally, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful and I hope you get that 9 or 8 star in biology because you deserve it. Bye!